hello guys hope you are doing good so in today's video we will be understanding uh, the properties of the robot in detail and we'll understand how we are going to use robot for modeling purpose the robot is one of the object into the task executors in the previous videos we have understood elevators forklifts operators and agv our next task executor Cuter will be robot and we will use this robot for our flexi modeling so you can see this is one of the model already prepared where we have used the robot we will start modeling this model from starting together so let's begin understanding robot as a task executor hey guys welcome to the channel i f 4.0 this is ajay so we will understand the robot properties in detail from beginning so i will drag the robot inside into the model background what we need to do is we need to bring one of the source then we will bring one of the queue so the source will transfer the material to the queue and from the queue it would be transported to the processor so what i'll do is i'll make the e connection between this then what i'll do is i'll make a connection for the processor from processor we'll transfer it to the queue and then from the queue we'll transfer it to the sink and if you see there is robot one we have dragged into we are going to use this robot for transporting the material so we are going to use this for transporting the material onto the processor and we will use another robot which will be used for transporting the part as well as processing the part on the processor okay so this is that robot now you can see what i have done is i have intentionally made a distance between the processor 1 and q2 long so what we will do is along with the all the six axes robot i also want to make seven axis robot where that robot would be traveling from one location to another so what i'll do is i will bring the network node into the picture so i'll bring one of the node here and what i'll do is i'll make a connection from this node till here so i will automatically have another node coming here i will connect this robot to this node by a connection then this processor by a connection and then q by a connection to this network node now what it will do is this robot will travel from over this network node which will be acting at its seventh axis so this is seven axis robot this is six axis robot so what i'll do is i'll reset and run but what i'll do is initially we haven't made any source so i'll make enter arrival time as zero and i'll make us at one i'll reset and run so i'll have a part every second so you can see how the robot is working and functioning it is transferring the pad onto the processor and what this robot is going to do is it is going to help it for processing it is going to load and then it is going to unload onto the queue i will disable the connections which so that the model looks beautiful so you can see how this 3d model is created and every joint movement of the robot is visible you can see the movement the axial movements the gripings the gripper opening and closing you can clearly see that so you can see how detailed leveling of simulation model we have created using robots so robots are used as a task executor in our current simulation model now you can see the queue stacking is just going on filling because the rate at the output rate of the queue is lesser than the input rate so input is faster output is slower i'll reset the model now we'll understand some of the properties of the robot robot is the most complex task executor here as it has number of axes and number of joints which are having us more so we have statistics same as we have it for another task executors then we have labels and the robot we have extra robot property window where we have edit geometry motion mode and move move, move time so in the edit geometry what we can do is the reset position if you see this is the reset position for the robot you can see it's this way what we can do is here are the relative speeds here is the open gripper width this is that open gripper width so by using this tab you can 
change the reset position of the robot so you can change the reset direction see you can change this so this is for joint one then this is for joint two so the way you want that the robot should be at its reset position you can keep that that way also you can specify the relative speeds for the joint so the relative speeds itself mean that the speed for the joint with respect to each other so the already the speeds are mentioned here these are the normal or you can say the standard speeds fed presently into the robot geometry window what we will do is we'll see another thing so here in the edit geometry as discussed you can change the reset position you can change the relative speeds and you can change the creeper width so this is all about reset position how the robot should look when the model is resetted then we need to go so if you want to set this as a reset position what you need to do is you need to click on this set reset position to current then the robot will go onto the whatever dimensions you have specified it will go and take that as reset position then when you reset it it is going to have that same position so you can check this i'll put this as set to reset position when i reset it it will be in the same position but initially if you saw when i make it reset it always used to go to its reset position so we have changed the reset position for the robot now so the next property comes is the motion mode so motion mode there are four modes one is simple method mode so basically motion mode relates to how this robot should move and how much time it should consume there are four types or methods for it first is the simple motion motion mode where you can enter the extension speed you can enter the z rotation speed and y rotation speed and you can go ahead and the robot will take the speed accordingly but say if you don't have these speeds you can go with another a method that is motion mode that is move time now this move time is basically the time where if you specify this as 5 seconds all the joint speeds will be assigned automatically or reach distributed automatically based on this time which you're going to enter here so the robot is going to take 5 seconds from loading till unloading so this is the whole timing so if you know by watching the videos of the plant you can easily get what time the robot has from load to unload you can directly put that time there rather than putting each joint speed now say if you are having joint speeds available you can put the joint speeds also here so we are having six joints six axes you can put the speed for each of the joint that feature is also available for motion mode and then we have motion paths so when you go into the edit path so for loading if you play this you can watch how this robot is going to work for load so this is how it is the it has its path for loading if you check the path for unloading if you click on this and unload and you play this you can see how it is going to do so this is the motion it is going to follow for unloading now what you can do is you can change the distance you can change the coordinates here you can change the move time here also you can change its reset position that is current position if you want you can put the coordinates here and click ok then you can put here path cycle time so it is basically the overall time the robot requires to complete the action you can put the creeper action basically close time how much time it should require for opening closing so this is a very in detail plan for robot to work so if you have all these inputs into your uh, for your project you can put these inputs into the robot and you can run but mostly we use move time methodology because it's very convenient it's very easy just put one time and it gets redistributed accordingly then we have the capacity one load time and load time this is similar to what we have seen for another task executors we have the maximum speed now this speed is not related to the motion speed or joint speed it's related to the longitudinal speed is the movement seven axis seventh axis speed so you can specify that also we have this feature similar to what we have seen for our previous task executors then we have the dispatcher property 
it is also similar basically this is used to transfer part so put the strategy that how this robot should pass the part so it can pass first available which is shortest queue random round robin strategically and then we have the ports and then we have the triggers and the triggers we are having all these uh, options which we can use so depending on the constraints we need to apply for a robot we can use that trigger and we can model it accordingly so you can see I have used two types of robots here one will is a static six axis robot and another is seven axis running robot so you can see the moments it is doing for traveling processing transferring this is how the model looks what we can do is we can change the cycle time to five so the parts are coming slowly and the queue is not getting filled up and this is how it works so if you make it slow and when you go and have a clear watch from close you can see how the moment of the robot takes plus so this is all about for today so we have completed the robot as the task executor and the properties for the robot and the modeling of the robot how we can use robot for task sequencing or as a task executor in the upcoming next videos we will be understanding next task executor that is crane and asrs vehicles so till then if you haven't subscribed to our channel please subscribe to the channel and stay tuned thank you take care we'll meet in the next upcoming video bye bye